Hi, everybody. My name is Joe Deanst, and I am the Health Sciences and STEM Librarian here at Gumberg Library. I am creating this video to give an overview on using EndNote, the citation management software. I will say just to start that this tutorial steps that I go through today will be specific to Microsoft and PC users. For the most part, if you're a Mac user, things will look the same, just might look a little bit different depending on because of your operating system. Um, but for the most part, the steps are the same. It's just a little bit of the wording might be different based on the menu options and whatnot. Um, but that's just to say I'm going to be using a PC for this demonstration. All right. So just for more information on installation, uh, I would advise you to visit our EndNote library guide. The URL is on the screen. I won't be going over installation in this, so this is just under the assumption that you already have it successfully installed. And if you're having difficulty with the steps of this um, an installation, we do have step-by-step -step instructions available on our EndNote library guide. For troubleshooting those kinds of problems, please don't hesitate to reach out to EndNote technical support. They're really highly regarded by students and faculty in my experience, and they're very quick and thorough in providing help for uh, installation and also just kind of some of the ins and outs of EndNote usage. Um, so their contact info I will show at the end of this demonstration for you to be able to access, but that is also available on the EndNote library guide. So once you finally install EndNote 20. And I will say EndNote 20 is the most recent version. So that's the version that we'll be talking about today. Once you've finally installed it, you'll see this left hand screen uh, with the option to create a new library. And so you will go through and click that create a new library. Once you do that, um, that will create two files, which you'll see on the right hand side. Um, this creates an, an EndNote library file, which is a .enl file, and then also a data file, which is the .data. Those need to be stored in the same place on your computer. So when you are saving them and storing them in terms of file location, you need to make sure that those are in the same place because those contain all of the information for your EndNote library. All right. So with that being said, I will hop over into EndNote and show you that this is what it looks like. So this is an empty EndNote library. This is what it looks like fresh and clean. What I always like to do first when I'm opening a library is I like to create groups and split things into groups. Um, so in a moment, we will be adding references from a database in our library. I'm going to show you specifically PubMed. Uh, and EndNote can store thousands upon thousands of references in, in a library. And so it's really important to make sure that we're keeping our sources organized organized because it's very easy to lose track when which references are related to which class or which project and what's what, what goes where. Um, so you can create files. It's kind of like a filing system like would be in your in your desktop computer, but these are just called groups. So to do this, we would go up here to groups at the top and we would first create a group set. So for the purpose of this exercise, we'll say project A is the name of this group set. That's kind of like an overarching group and then we can create individual groups inside of that. So I'm gonna name this one PubMed because that's where we're going to be importing references from, but you can name them whatever you'd like and you don't need to necessarily name them just based on the, the uh, location that you're getting them from, whatever makes sense to you in organizing. Alrighty, so without further ado, we will hop over to PubMed. The fastest way I can think of to get to PubMed is going from the library homepage here and right underneath the search bar for Duke Search, we actually have this little link that takes you directly to PubMed at Duquesne. So the example search that I will be doing for this is emotional contagion and COVID-19. So we will hit search. All righty. And we've got 179 results. A good rule of thumb is when you come across an article that you could see yourself needing or finding useful for your project, just export it to EndNote. Um, that way you will have it available at your disposal when you want to refer back to it. Otherwise, you'll have to go on a wild goose chase for that article to find it again, which can always be a little bit difficult. So when we're going through here, we see something that sounds like it's relevant to our topic. We are going to select the checkbox to the left of the title. And we'll pick, I'm kind of picking these willy nilly, but ideally you would be reading the title and abstract to determine whether or not it is uh, relevant to your topic. But we'll select 
10. We'll scroll up to the top and up here we can select send to followed by citation manager. And for this, we could select just the selection that we have of these 10. There's also options to do all of the results total, which would be all 179 results. Um, but we're gonna just select the selection that we have and we'll click create file. We see down here that it's made a download for us and we can click that file and we will export to EndNote. Now we have all of these references that we've gotten and I like to select them all using control A. Whoops, control A. There we go. Uh, just because that's a quick way to select all of them because these are not filed references. They're just put into this imported section. So in order to put these into the group that we've created, we can select control A and then we can click and drag them over to the group that they're gonna be in. And now they're here. All righty. So one of the great tools with uh, EndNote is the ability to find full text. And I am going to show you, where did the, there we go. We can pop into the slideshow again. All right. So to set up find full text, you need to be able to do that with authenticating with Gumberg Library's collections. Um, and so you would go to edit, preferences and find full text, which would show you this kind of little menu window that's on the screen here. And you see those two boxes that are highlighted are URLs that you're gonna need to copy and paste. Uh, those URLs are on the EndNote library guide for you and just copying and pasting those in there will help with setting up the finding full text option. So you would click okay and apply and then okay. So we'll pop back to EndNote, and this is what it looks like. So EndNote, Edit, Preferences, Find Full Text, and this is where you would copy and paste those URLs. So once we have those copied and pasted, we can select the articles that we want to find full text for, which in this case, we'll select all of them. And then we right click and click Find Full Text. If it's the first time that you're accessing EndNote that day, it will have you authenticate with your multi-pass. Uh, this is not my first time using EndNote today, so it didn't ask me to. Um, so when it's searching for full text, there are three possible outcomes of this search. There is the possibility of um, found PDF. You'll see it doing its work right here on the left-hand side under the find full text. There's found PDF, found URL, and not found. Now it looks like for this example, they didn't see it, they didn't find any like found URL. For found PDF, this is the ideal result that we would get, just basically means EndNote successfully found a PDF document for the article and automatically linked the actual PDF to your uh, references. If we click this tab of the found PDF, we can see over here, this little paperclip column and icon that designates the fact that there is a linked PDF there. And to view it on an individual reference, we would just click on that reference and we could click PDF. And that's the PDF of the article. It's super great. Now it looks like it's not gonna show us the found URL option, but that's okay. I'll still tell you about it. Um, found URL means that EndNote found a link that could likely direct to the full text of the article, but for whatever reason, it's not actually able to take that next step and get you the PDF. So what would happen is you would just need to go into the actual reference and you would go to, like you could see it on the edit screen or the summary screen, and you would click a link this links to the PDF, but it would click to a link in the actual database for that article. And there's likely buttons that you could find and follow the rabbit hole to get to the PDF. Um, and then you would need to download that PDF by hand and then re-upload it using this attach file button to that actual reference. That's kind of the same process that you would need to do for not found. For not found, what, me what that means is essentially um, if articles aren't found by EndNote, it could be that a database that the article is listed in prevents harvesting of full text. It doesn't necessarily mean we don't have it. We would just need to kind of do a search 
of the title of an article to see if we have it. So I would copy the title of this article and we can hop over to Duke Search. You could also search it in Google Scholar. I like to use Duke Search just because it's easier to access for me. So this is the name of the article that we are looking for. And look at that, we do actually have PDF options for this. So we would click this PDF, we would go to it, we could download it, and we could just call it social media burnout. And then we can hop back over to EndNote, attach file, and we can upload that PDF. I will say, you'll need to go to the edit screen and click save. So that way you can see this paper clip shows that it was successfully uploaded the PDF. Otherwise you won't have that PDF saved there. Um, a tool that makes this process a lot easier for the found URL and found and, and not found options is, um, let me hop to the libkey nomad. So this is a tool that we have. It is a browser extension that automatically finds PDFs of full text available at Gumberg. You can learn more about it in this YouTube tutorial as well as our library guide that we have. But basically it makes finding PDFs so much faster and so much easier and puts a lot less of the work on you following these, these kind of like rabbit holes. One of the last features I will talk about is site while you write. So this is a plugin that EndNote has with Microsoft Word. So as long as you have EndNote 20 installed, you should be able to, when you open Word, see this tab of EndNote 20. If not, uh, I would contact or check out the library guide first and see if you can troubleshoot that way. But then uh, either contact us or contact EndNote support um, because that should be available to you. But so when you're in Word, as you're typing a research paper, you can actually insert in-text citations using EndNote. So say we are typing our paper and we say author says, and then I use APA 7th format. You can also change that up here to a different format depending on your uh, professor's discretion and also just the requirements for your class, but then you would click this insert citation button. And let's see, what's the name of our, we have Xiao, okay. So we're citing Xiao. We can search for the name of the author, we can get this, and we can actually either double click this highlighted area or we can select insert. And for APA, it creates parenthetical citation at the end of a sentence and then it also will create you a formatted bibliography to edit this the layout of this bibliography you can click the little window here in this bibliography area but it makes it super easy to quickly go through and edit and cite your references if you want to edit this the formatting of the parenthetical citations you would go up here to edit and manage citations you can add page numbers. Uh, you can actually click this edit reference will take you back into EndNote and you can change the reference information there. If you want to delete a reference, I recommend that you do it this way by clicking this drop down in the edit menu and clicking remove citation. That and then we would click OK. That will remove it from both places. Otherwise, if you just try to backspace it at the end of a sentence, it will keep it in your um, in your formatted bibliography. So if you want to make sure that you're actually getting rid of it, that's the way to go. One thing I will say, just to kind of help with wrap up, is the formatting of references. Um, EndNote is a great tool and resource, and it formats citations very quickly and it speeds up the process quite a bit, but it is limited in the information that it can use to format citations, and that is the information given to it by the database. So you need to make extra careful sure when you're going through and inserting these references and putting them into EndNote that they're formatted correctly and that the information is accurate. Um, because EndNote doesn't check for that kind of thing. EndNote doesn't know how to check the, for the citation manual specifically for what to do if a reference doesn't have its DOI or what to do if the uh, title of an article is improperly capitalized. So you'll need to go through and make sure that everything is correct. Another example of this is PubMed. Um, PubMed will index articles from journals with the journal title 
abbreviated. So in APA standards, you have to have the full title of the journal typed out and fleshed out in its entirety. So you need to go back and edit all of the titles of the journals in your EndNote because all of these references from journals from PubMed are abbreviated. Um, so that's just an example. You, you, you always want to check over your references to make sure that they're properly formatted, um, which might be annoying, but it's a lot less annoying to do it at the forefront than it is to have to go back and redo all of this work at the end of the process. So that's what I will say about that. Just as a quick aside, if APA 7th edition is the format that you are using, there is a workaround for PubMed journal abbreviations, and there are step-by-step -step instructions on how to set this up on our EndNote guide. Uh, it's on the How Do I tab, and then you can select Fix Journal Abbreviations. There's a link to a video that kind of walks you through the process, and then there's also written out steps for um, how to correct those journal abbreviations. So just as an FYI, if that is a format that you are going to be using and you don't want to have to go back every single time that you are installing or importing references into EndNote from PubMed or others that abbreviate the journals, there is this workaround for you. I mentioned earlier how to get help. You can always contact the library for any help in tips and tricks related to EndNote, uh, organization help, reference help. Uh, getting info on how to export from other databases. We went over PubMed today. That's also available on our EndNote library guide. Um, there's tips on several of the other databases like CINAHL, Scopus, APA Psych Info. There's a whole lot of uh, resources available for that. You can schedule appointments with librarians. You can call us. You can chat with us using Ask Gumberg. There's a whole slew of resources in how to contact the library. Um, and then when it comes to more technical support, this is the information for contacting EndNote. You can call them. They're available from Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And you would call the number that's on the screen. That information is also on our EndNote library guide. And you can also access the, uh, the, the support FAQ that they have on their website. That's linked on our library guide as well. If you'd like to contact me specifically for questions, you can feel free to do that. I am available via email. You could also schedule an appointment with me or uh, you can call my office number. But I am happy to help you in any way that I can. And I wish you the best of luck in this process. Thanks for watching and take care.